Well, I want to dig deeper into this annexation move and two very different sides. Let's bring in Eugene Kontrovich. He's the Director of International Law at Coalette Policy Forum, joining us out of New York this hour. And we also have Tamar Hostovsky Brandes. She's a senior lecturer at Ono Academic College, joining us live from Tel Aviv. And let's start with you, Tamar. What do you make of Mr. Netanyahu's words on annexation? Well, first, I wouldn't make too much of um, declarations made a few days ahead of the mm. election. Um, and I think it's time, I mean, and, and as, as everyone has said before, that Mr. Netanyahu has been able to make this move uh, for many, many years now and has chosen not to do so. And obviously, the question of annexation, alleged annexation of the West Bank involves not just land, it, involves, it, it affects the right of self-determination of the Palestinian people, it affects the human rights of Palestinian residents in the territory. So I wouldn't read too much into a declaration made at this point in time. Eugene, your thoughts? I agree with Tamar that uh, what pro uh, politicians promise two days before the election is not always the best guide for what's going to happen. But I do think it's important that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is beginning to change the narrative. And he's beginning to insist that it's unacceptable that in the area of Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, the historical homeland of the Jews, that that should be a Judenrein area. And the only way we know for Jews to be able to live safely in these areas is under Israeli sovereignty. And he's saying, uh, this talk of kicking out Jews from their homes, making certain areas Jew-free, that's not something my government's going to be part of. Whatever the details are, it's an important narrative change. Well, these are occupied lands, so far as the Palestinians are concerned. This is uh, one assumes possibly part of uh, a deal going forward for peace, certainly uh, part of the narrative. Look, Netanyahu may be serious, it may just be an election ploy. Eugene, if you are applauding this move, even at the expense of the potential for a major crisis in US-Israeli relations, do you not believe this move could destroy any prospect of a negotiated peace through this deal of the century, as it's been known? So I don't think uh, the Israeli government is likely to act at all before uh, the deal of the century is put forward. I think the Palestinians are going to have one more chance to accept a state. The Palestinians are the only national independence movement to ever have turned down internationally recognized independence in any part of the territory they seek for a state. Uh, the Kurds haven't done that. Israel didn't do that, even though it first achieved a state in a small part of the territory it sought. The Palestinians are going to have one more chance to accept a state. I think if they don't, uh, the train is going to be leaving the station, and they cannot keep this area uh, in suspension. They cannot keep its status on hold uh, while they turn down offer after offer. Tama, how do you respond to uh, those comments? Well, I agree with Eugene that to a large extent this is about changing the narrative, but I think that uh, one needs mm. to understand that this is actually about an internal Israeli narrative. So the current internal Israeli narrative that Mr. Mm. Netanyahu is trying to present is to a large extent that whatever the future of the territories is, it is going to be a decision made by Israelis unilaterally. And I think that is what the narrative he's trying to push, and I think that is very problematic narrative, both from a political and from a legal standpoint. So I think it is much about the narrative, but I think it's very, too, very much an internal Israeli debate. It has to be said that uh, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict has for decades been the main fault line um, in Israeli politics. But as my colleague points out on CNN.com, Oren says this time it's issues like security, for which read the threat of Iran in Syria, the Israeli economy, and most of all, the criminal investigations against Netanyahu that have dominated the headlines. Again, suggesting that these comments, this statement on annexation, um, a an effort to push the conflict that he knows he can get support on back into focus in these well, sort of dying embers of this campaign? Well, we know, we know that the United States has said that it will put forward its peace plan shortly after the election. So I think it's natural and important for the government of Israel to set forth what its position is going to be on that, and in particular on what happens if this peace plan fails, which is likely to do, regardless of its contents, because every prior peace plan has failed. Uh, and I should say that, you know, the uh, left and uh, the opposition, Gantz's party, has also not been very focused on the uh, Palestinian issue. 
the, mm. So we don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I think uh, Pr Prime Minister Netanyahu is setting the stage for the peace plan, which he's going to have to deal with even before a new government is fall formed. Uh, Tom Jordan's foreign minister yesterday, um, and I was with him, echoing the position, uh, not just of Palestinians, but of millions in the Arab and wider Muslim world, that Israel must withdraw from Arab lands occupied since 1967 and allow the creation of a Palestinian state. This is a red line and not a viable diplomatic move um, so far as the Jordanians and, uh, and many, many others are concerned. This is an occupation, they say, to which Israeli it's politicians will say what at this point? It's particularly rich coming from the Jordanians, huh. who themselves occupied the West Bank from 1949 to 1967. When they uh, did that, they kicked out every single Jew from the territory. Now they're saying they don't want there to be any more Jews there forever. That position is illegitimate. Israel is not interested in listening to them. Uh, and Israel made peace in 1994 with Jordan. From an international law perspective, any situation of occupation that might have existed, and I don't think there was one, is uh, over the moment a peace treaty is signed. Jordan signed that peace treaty. They know there's a peace treaty. You can't have an uh, occupation which arises in states of war after a peace treaty, and certainly the Jordanians shouldn't be giving lectures on occupying the West Bank. They invented that. Tama. Well, the consensus has been forever that whatever the resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict needs to be, it needs to be uh, by a resolution that will be reached through dialogue. It cannot be a unilateral move. I don't think any unilateral declaration talking about one-sided annexation that doesn't address at all the issue of the human rights and the future of the residents of that territory can be taken seriously. I don't think it can be taken seriously politically. I don't think it can be taken seriously legally. I think it is trying to make a statement and recruit voters from certain side of the political map three days um, before the election. And I think that, to a large extent, that really, all, that really is all it is. And regarding this last, Eugene's last comment, yes, there is this new wave, new doctrine that has come up in recent years saying, actually, this is not an occupied territory. Israel in it, itself, in the Israeli Supreme Court, has regarded the, the territories as land that the law of occupation applies to them, even if it doesn't use Parts the of the law. Israel has territory. said that it's voluntarily legal, applying been, parts of the law of occupation. Hold yeah. on. Yes, but Hold this on, has been Eugene. the legal framework. This has been the legal framework since you know since the since the territory was occupied until today. So that very very aggressive attempt to change the narrative completely. I agree with Eugene that this is what it is, but I, I think it should also be called out as what it is. We're gonna have to leave it there. We'll have you two back. Thank you very much indeed, Eugene. Kondovich, the Director of International Law at Coalit Policy Forum, and Tamar Hostovsky Brandis, she is Senior Lecturer at Ono Academic College in Tel Aviv. Pleasure having you both on.